and junior high just as the bell is starting to ring. And the assistant principal here in Muleshoe at Watson Junior High, Ronnie Jones, talking with the students and doing some of his regular duties that we all know him for doing. But we're going to find out another side of Ronnie Jones today and see what else besides students he enjoys. what uh, he thought maybe cowboys and students had in common. And he said, well, he really didn't know. Maybe it was like the cowboy herding cattle, and maybe it really is. And we're gonna find out if there is any similarity because we understand that Ronnie Jones has a hobby that is really a part of his life. We're gonna find out about the other side of Ronnie Jones' life. Now it is partly right here in Watson Junior High School Library where we're sitting today, but the other part of your life besides school and being a school teacher and a farmer coach, Ronnie, is your collecting of what? What you see right before you here are all kinds of Western materials, mainly old Western movies from the 30s and the 40s and early 50s. How in the world did you ever get started <laughs> with this type of a hobby? Well, uh, this goes back to my childhood uh, in Oklahoma, Hollis, Oklahoma, where I grew up. Uh, nearly everybody went to town on Saturday afternoon and saw the movies. Did you all live in the country? Uh, we lived about 15 miles out in the country, mm -hmm. and uh, we'd go to town and see movies similar to what you see on this table here and on, on these tables around us. And uh, I guess the fascination just never left me. Now, is this what you call a B-Western, Ronnie? Most of these are. What, what is a B-Western, really, though? Okay, to... well, uh, a lot of the collectors that uh, collect this material today call them B for better. Mm, but, I you see. know, that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, really, what it is, they were made on a cheaper scale. Okay, And uh, uh -huh. they were um, uh, budget Westerns. Mm -hmm. And uh, they showed as a Saturday afternoon double feature, and uh, they were the type of entertainment that was important to especially small rural towns right. in those days and uh -huh. you know in the late 40s and early 50s. How much did you pay to get in to see uh, the movie? Uh, usually anywhere from 10 cents to 50 cents uh -huh. and I think most of the time an average of 25 to 35 cents. Uh -huh. A little different and they, today. and they made money? They uh, made money because everybody went to see them, and I'm mm -hmm. sure it, uh, these movies were made on budgets of like uh, three or four hundred thousand dollars. Whereas now, uh, the star itself uh, in a movie might uh, make up to ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. that's a big difference. Uh, do you have one hero, John Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I like all these movies, but of course, John Wayne had to be really the king of the cowboys mm -hmm. because he made movies for 50 years mm -hmm. you know uh, that's what Roy Rogers is known as but John Wayne made a different type of movie and he was more enduring mm -hmm. and yes, still he is sure. really right mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. definitely now though really when you when did you start your hobby you know collecting I mean, uh, really uh, collecting uh-huh probably about 20 years ago uh, I started collecting uh, small uh, items and so on of the movies that I could find and I didn't know anyone else was really interested in these things. Really? And then uh -huh. about uh, all 15 or so years ago I started collecting 16 millimeter films mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, when videotape came in and I found that I could get a lot more material on tape there's there's uh, there are a lot of companies that sell this material now. Where did so, you get your first item from? How uh, did you come about can, it? The first movie items I I uh, bought two movies from a fellow named Wayne Lackey in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, I believe, at the time. Uh -huh. And I got a, a Western movie uh, with Alan Rocky Lane called Death Valley Gunfighter and then another with Eddie Dean called Hawk of Powder River, uh -huh. uh, both made in, in the late 40s. And how much did it cost you? Uh, one of the movies cost me $20 and the other one, I believe, $40. And has the value gone up? Uh, it has. Uh, that's a funny thing. On uh, the films now, if you own the films today, the value has gone up if you have an original film and not a dupe mm -hmm, copy. Mm -hmm. But uh, the tape is really not worth all that much except to collectors. Now, if you get uh, certain materials that uh, are very rare and, and get the copyright to them and make your own tapes, then, of course, they're worth something. But otherwise, mm -hmm. they're really not worth that much. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what we see around us, behind us and here in front of, are these all originals or are they copies? Uh, the biggest part of them are originals. Now, some of these are re-releases, and they're mm -hmm. original, but they were just the original re-release right. a few uh -huh. years later when the movie was re-released. Okay, now, like this, uh, what do you call these, a show bill or That's what? That's called an insert. An insert, um, and the, it was sent to the movie house. Right. Uh -huh. And where did they hang it? Okay, uh... Well, we'll just start out in the front of the theater. They had a place for what's called a one-sheet poster, and you can still see these in, in front of the theaters today. Yes, uh-huh. And uh, we is have... Is this it? Now, this is an insert, and it in goes over to the side uh -huh. of the of the one-sheet. And then uh, uh, directly between the insert and the one-sheet was... Uh, uh, they had some slots for what they call lobby cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lobby cards are right behind you, like this angel and the bad man with John mm -hmm. Wayne here. Okay. And these usually came out in sets of eight. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then directly above the one sheet was what uh, they had a slot for what they called a half sheet poster. And we have a half sheet somewhere around, uh, right over here, this old Oklahoma Plains with Rex mm -hmm. Allen's, what we call a half sheet, and trail dust with Hoplone Casty. Now, how did you obtain these items that we were just talking about? Uh, as, as I said, I've met a lot of people uh, through this hobby all over the country, and uh, uh, many of them sell some of this material, and there are also places in California and different places that just specialize in, in the old posters. Plus, uh, I have been lucky enough to get in a couple of old theaters. I, you don't find that much anymore, but mm -hmm. I have. Right. Uh -huh. And, uh, and where, where some of it, some of them that you got oh, in I, I got in the old th one of the old theaters at Hollis, Oklahoma, my hometown, uh -huh. and I uh, got quite a bit of stuff. And I, I didn't really, you know, it, it's kind of sad because I didn't get much of this type of material here that burned all that. Mm -hmm. And that happened in a lot of cases, and I got yeah. some material, though, that really helped me. Uh, now, Ronnie, what about the pictures? Now, I don't know why, okay. but I remember the pictures. I don't see these anymore. Do they uh, release these? They released them. Uh, those are called glosses, mm -hmm. eight by tens. They, uh, sometimes there'd be as many as 50 or 60 on one movie, and they'd release these to the public for advertisement purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these now, uh, used to, you could go to a Roy Rogers movie, and they'd release uh, colored pictures like this, and some of these are worth quite a bit of money now, mm -hmm. if you have them. But uh, yes, they still release those. And didn't the uh, man who owned or managed the show get some type of a press packet or something like that? Uh, or do you have that? There are some press books right behind us here. This Bad Man's Territory with Randolph Scott and Rage at Dawn's also Randolph Scott. And then El Dorado, uh, later John Wayne Robert Mitchum movie. And uh, uh, yes, they put out this press material. And uh, I have over here, if you can get the camera over on the far table right in front of oh, Sam Houston uh -huh. there, I have uh, what are called ad sheets and uh, they released those. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, they had uh, a lot of other types of advertisements. Uh, I have some things like the uh, Captain Marvel serial that came out in 1941. If you went to uh, all 11, the first 11 chapters, you got to go to 12 chapter uh, free. And I have a, a little okay, card. Now, okay, yeah, now Slow down. Yeah, well, okay, now what do we uh, We're talking about the, the serials, uh -huh. if you remember those yeah, that they had on Saturday, and cliffhangers, and we called them continued pieces right. in Oklahoma. They and, were uh, very continued. <laughs> I well, had to go back next uh, Saturday. You know, the hero is falling off a cliff, and, or a horse is running over him, or some such thing. And you came back each week to see what happened. Now, you saw usually a newsreel and colored cartoons, and maybe a Three Stooges cartoon, yeah, and right. you had previews of coming attractions, which were always better than the movies, really. Uh -huh. And um, then you had the serial and maybe a few shorts and then a double feature, okay? And, uh, and all that for a dime or All quarter. that for a dime or a quarter or whatever. Yeah. Now, uh -huh. uh, this little card I, I have, I, I didn't bring that with me, but uh, it... Uh, gives you a free admission to the movie the 12th week if you go the first okay, 11 so weeks and you get to go the 12th uh, the, I got you. movie you free. The whole, right, the whole free. thing free. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, that's a big thing back then. And Did your parents make you earn your money to go to the movie well, on charity? Uh, I guess my best uh, remembered movie going days uh, happened when uh, we turned out school in the fall. Uh, six weeks at this little country school called Ron in Oklahoma that I attended. And we had six or seven weeks in there. We pulled cotton, pull bowls, or whatever you want to call it. We call it pulling bowls. Yeah. And uh, then on Saturday, we took her paycheck and we bought her cowboy boots and hats and belts and things and went to the movies. Uh -huh. And we had two of them in Hollis. We had a La Vista theater and we had a Watt theater. Uh -huh. And uh, we just, yes, that's when I attended most of the movies in. 
you'd meet all your friends and you had all that kind of like being closer than players in a huddle or something, you right, know, that yeah. sort of thing. So <laughs> so uh, that's when I attended most of the movies. Now, in Tahoka, we had these chairs, Ronnie, that were double. There could be two sit to a chair. Did, did y'all no, have No, no, we didn't, have, didn't that. have that. No, we, uh, You know, that's why you're still single. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and probably all this right here. <laughs> so. Oh, dear me. Well, now, listen, uh, there's one other... This is the show calendar we haven't talked about. Okay. Tell us about that. What year uh, is this one? I, I don't have the year on this. I think it's 1939, and uh, I picked this up in Eastland, Texas. Mm -hmm. And it's, well, this is just what came out every month, and it tells you what yeah. you can go see. And as you see, the movie houses changed pictures very often back then and generally had a double feature on Saturday. And uh, you go to this movie on the 4th and 5th here on Saturday and mm -hmm. see all the previews of coming attractions and you're bound to go the next okay, week. You know, okay, this spider quite... web number 7. Okay, that that's a serial. Uh -huh, that's okay, a serial. Right. Okay, chapter number them. 7 yeah. and then the spider's web number 8, you know. And, you're right. You know, you had to go see those. That's just oh, all it amounted to. You know, if you saw one, you <laughs> had to see what you know, was happening because he's in midair just right. hanging there it, uh, fixing to fall or it, falling. It's real funny. Uh, you know, people would make fun of these things, but still they wouldn't miss them. So... There's another thing I remember was newsreels. Right. I don't remember them so much on Saturday. I remember them when the family went to the mm -hmm. show. We'd see the, the newsreel and that voice. Can't you just hear that, that one voice? Edward from, R. Murrin. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. Joella's uh, not as old as we are. She's laughing at us. <laughs> well, uh, the newsreel, now, they replay these on uh, yeah. Atlanta some now. Yeah. You can watch them. Yeah, and, uh, I, I still get a kick out yeah. of them, really. You know? really and there's a lot of history there, too. There certainly is. So, Isn't it great that it is preserved? Uh, this particular insert right here is, is not anything rare any, or uh, anything along those lines, the first section. But um, it's something that I tried to find a movie on for a long time to uh -huh. use in Texas history. It's about Sam Houston and Battle of San Jacinto. You like Sam Houston? Uh, Sam Houston. You know, uh, this is just my opinion, and I've gone to movies all my life. But uh, I really feel that the greatest injustice that Hollywood ever created was when they did not let John Wayne play Sam Houston when he was about 50 years old, mm -hmm. let him play the Sam Houston story. Because mm -hmm. Sam Houston was John Wayne in real life, if you mm -hmm. read about him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that, that poster, Joel McRae did a good job of playing Sam Houston there. And uh, the movie has a lot of uh, inaccuracies in it, like a lot of Hollywood yes, movies do. Right. But it still has, it's still, get, well, yeah. they do that when for the crowd, you know. But and, still, you know, and, yeah. you know, we we believe these and get it mixed uh -huh. up, you know, with the, the true thing. When it really is history, you know, that, right. that really... Uh, is a shame. But, uh, uh, that's uh, I enjoyed the movie. Now, are you teaching it. now? Or, uh, uh, not now. It, I, but last year, did you? Uh, or the you last have, I haven't in two years. I have taught Texas history, history for several years. Was that the thing you really enjoyed teaching? I, I enjoy Texas history very much. Now, um, did you have to incorporate this into the classroom and uh, your hobby and everything? And I'll, make have, it? I'll have to say that. Uh, John Wayne was a big part of Texas history because you look at some of his movies like The Comancheros and and uh, The Searchers and uh, I mean they fit right in with Texas history mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and we used those and then my favorite movie about the Alamo is uh, The Last Command. Mm -hmm. Sterling Hayden plays Jim Bowie in it but uh, it's uh, it has some inaccuracies again in it, but it's the most realistic one I've seen about the Alamo. Mm -hmm. And John Wayne's Alamo wasn't quite as good as that. I didn't mm -hmm. think, even though I'm a big John Wayne fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, the Texas history uh, fit in real well these Western movies. I, I think so. You know, this would maybe a student who really wasn't interested might you know start listening at that point if you could you uh, know incorporate that. This that into, happened. It really yeah. did. Uh -huh. uh, I know I've had some students that had never been interested in history before that I think uh, liked some of this material that we, mm -hmm. we had and all, and I, I think that was uh, which I liked that because they got interested in the course. Now, yeah. how much does this hobby cost? You know, what, you know... I, would, uh, uh, I wouldn't even have any idea how much yeah. I have tied up in this. I really wouldn't. I need a museum. Uh -huh. I know that. Uh, and it's all there in your house? Uh, most of it, it uh -huh. is. Uh -huh. And the like um, 
the movies, you know, how, how are you able to put them where you can keep them? Do you catalog them and everything and what uh, I plan system? on I plan on doing that, but it, uh, it's yet to be done. I'm glad you said that. You made me feel good. Uh, I'm a procrastinator, too. <laughs> uh, a number of years ago, you put out a booklet, didn't you? I did. This is uh, Alan Rocky Lane. He's a uh, star of the B-movies, and there's a... Uh, Let's see where Alan Lane poster is right here. This is a half sheet right behind you on Covered Wagon Raid, a 1950 movie. And uh, I just uh, summarized his movies, his Western movies in it, and did a little writing. I had a lot of fun doing it. Mm -hmm. And I have another uh, book that's been almost ready for several years, and I just really haven't done much with it, and that's on Charles Sterrett, the Durango Kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there's a... I didn't know his name. Uh, Charles Sterrett. Right, you remember the Durango Kid, oh, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, okay, Saturday so, Heroes, is this? Is uh, it, that's the name you, of it, Saturday Heroes. Can you still per, uh, purchase it? Uh, it's, I just have a couple that, left, yeah, so that, I, I may get it reprinted. You, what, I think this was put out in about 75, uh -huh, I believe. It's uh -huh. been several years ago. And um, I may sometime republish it, but I don't know, reissue it. Now, what about, have you ever sold anything you had uh, uh, to another not, collector? Not really, yeah. Uh, no. I've traded a few uh, mm -hmm. things. Uh, if there's something else I really wanted, I didn't like to, but I did. Yeah. But uh, um, most of it I just keep. I just enjoy it. Uh, uh, you were talking about back in Hollis, Oklahoma. Now, the principal of this school here in Muleshoe is related to you, Bob Gray. You see, well, now, he may not want you to mention that, well, but that's I, true. Well, I know he doesn't. He, we <laughs> talked out in the hall, yeah, and right. he said, now, remember. <laughs> right. Um, he grew up in Hollis, too. That's why I was going to ask you, uh, how are you all related? He is my uncle. He's your uncle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never guessed it. Uh, he's your uncle. Is he younger? No, he's a little older. He's a little older, yeah. yeah. He just looks younger, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, okay, and did you all go to the show together? Did, uh, were you all? Not, no, not a whole lot. So, um, I had a lot of friends that I went to the show with, but very few of them uh, are as crazy about these old movies as I am, you know, uh -huh. they uh, they think I'm crazy, you know, and everybody has their own hobby, you know, yeah. whatever it is. And Isn't it great that we it do? Is, yeah. Yes, really. But uh, uh, it's just something that uh, I've, I've let a lot of material go over the years that I wish I hadn't. Mm -hmm. And some of it's worth some money. What I have really is not all that, that valuable. The money isn't the interest uh, with you. Well, it would be, you know, if I could find some Humphrey Bogart posters and uh, or a Robin Hood with Errol Flynn or something that sells for about a thousand dollars, it'd be yes. But I don't have anything like that. But uh, mainly, it's just because I enjoy this You're and interested. keep it alive. You know, I, uh, after a hard day or a hard week, I go home and I watch a western movie and. and you know, very relaxed. I enjoy it. The good. What I like about these old movies is uh, they're very simple and they have to grow on you. And they're black and white, most of them. Mm -hmm. But the good guy wins. And uh, instead of going home at night and watching <laughs> CBS, do you go home um, and uh, watch? Uh, well, now I, I watch some television. You know, but. Uh, uh, I watch a lot of movies too, and then I have some movies that I've never seen and may, may never get around to watching. I don't know, really? but it's just kind of kind of like collecting stamps. It's a thrill of getting a rare movie. And do you watch? Uh, I mean, do you have uh, other movies other than westerns? Right, I'm I'm a Tarzan fan. I like the Tarzan movies with Johnny Weissmuller and Lex Barker and. But and, that's uh, sort of akin <laughs> to this. Got oh yeah, it's else? B. It's B. Okay, anything uh, else? New movies? That what you're talking no, about? No, 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 no. Okay, well. I, the musical is what uh, I liked. The musicals are okay. I really don't collect oh, them. Oh, now. The, oh, <laughs> can't you just uh, see 50 chorus girls and all that all that glamour? You don't have any of those? Uh, I don't have any like Oklahoma or South no, Pacific or anything back, like that. You know, okay. farther back than that. Uh, I just loved, I grew up with, you know, the musicals. And right. they, I, to me, they were so, they've never produced, you know, they stopped just like the, the Western. Um, I, like ac I like action movies. Okay. <laughs> I like, and um, I kind of like Chuck Norris movies today. I like Lone Wolf McQuaid. Uh, you don't like Esther Williams? Uh... Esther Williams is all right. If you like Esther Williams. Oh, she you're she a was man. a good swimmer, you know. Uh, oh. Is she still alive? As far as I know, yeah. she uh, she right. was very recently, mm -hmm. and I, I get a lot of papers that tell, you know, usually every time you get one of them, some of the old what stars kind of have papers? died. Oh, film collectors registry and such mm -hmm. titles as that. And um, they just keep you up with the news mm -hmm. of what's happening in the collecting world and all. And like I say, I've met a lot of people. 
uh, doing this, and some of them, you have know, you are very good friends. Have you gone to conventions or I went to uh, one convention, and unfortunately, it just hadn't worked out to where I could go to anymore. But I went to one in 1978 in St. Louis, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a great time. It's kind of like a kid getting turned loose in Santa Claus land. You know, they had movies going in every room, and serials, and westerns, and maybe uh, detective movies, anything you want to see. And uh, then they had a great big large trading room that uh, had tables everywhere kind of like this except mm -hmm. it was a lot larger and uh, you could uh, buy materials or talk to other collectors and this sort of thing and they also had some of the old stars there they were still alive oh really uh, anybody uh, I don't know, you probably won't remember this one but there was a, a little what you call bad guy in the movies and uh, named Terry Frost and uh, I, I'm not sure if he's still alive now or not, mm -hmm. but uh, he was one of the guest stars there. And, of course, in the movies, you always hated him because he was always beating up on Lash LaRue or something like that, you know. But uh, I got acquainted with him, and he's really a fine fellow, and I really enjoyed that. And uh, the fellow that directed most of the Roy Rogers and Rex Allen Republic Westerns was William Whitney. And I got to eat breakfast with him one morning. And uh, he was uh, about 22 or 3 years old when he was doing all this. And I mean, he was around 60 then. I enjoyed mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And old Hank Warden that played old Moe's and the Searchers, I got my picture taken with him. Uh, he's still in a few movies now, Eastwood movies and so mm -hmm. forth. And uh, Jennifer Holt, Tim Holt's sister, was there. And uh, Edgar Buchanan, just before he died, he'd had a stroke. And he was, you know, ill then. But he was there. He used to... He, he was a character actor in Western movies, and he was also a Hopalong Casty sidekick, Red Connors, on the TV series mm -hmm. in the early 50s. And uh, several others that uh, uh, I got to meet. Uh, most of the, but then most of the stars like Rocky Lane and, and uh, some of those that I really enjoyed watching as a kid had died. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't get to see some of those. I guess the villains outlived the heroes. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Maybe so. Well, but, is there anything that we haven't touched on, Ronnie? About well, I have a couple of comic books. I don't, I'm not big in collecting them, but I have a few of those laying over there of the Western movies. That's that's fine right did, there. Did they come out in those years? Uh, they then? came out in those years, and uh, some of those are worth something. Uh, mm -hmm. It's according to what artist drew them. Like Joe Serta was mm -hmm. a real famous artist, and he drew some of the Charles Sterrett, uh, Sterrett materials, which I don't really have uh, any of those, but uh, they are not as uh, valuable as, say, the superhero mm -hmm. comic books mm -hmm. like Captain Marvel and Superman. If you had the number one Superman came out in 1938, it's worth about $4,000. No, he mm -hmm. cost a nickel at the time, you know. You just so. don't know what to keep, do you? No, well, I, I've always tried to keep everything. I <laughs> <laughs> used to have a lot of baseball cards and something happened to them, you know. Oh, so, gosh. <laughs> but uh, that's true. Now, right behind us there, there's uh, what we call ad sheets. Uh, I don't know whether we looked at those yeah, or not. Yeah, we did. Did we? Oh, okay. Yeah, we looked at the ad sheets. And uh, other than that, we have the posters out here. Uh -huh. And, and uh, that's What year did you it. come to Mule Shoot? Uh, 1963. From where? 64. 64. Right. I, well, I went to school in Oklahoma at Southwestern State College mm -hmm. in Weatherford, Oklahoma. And then I spent one year teaching in Oklahoma, at uh, Snyder, Oklahoma, and then I've been out here off and on ever since. Mm -hmm. I did spend uh, three years in Lubbock but in between. But why did you come to Mule Shoe Texas? Well, I, uh, as when I was growing up, we lived at Lasbuddy oh, for you did. three I years. Oh, did? I not know that. Um, I grew up in Oklahoma, basically, but uh, from my eighth grade year to my junior year, I lived at Lasbuddy, uh -huh. and so I, I had a few friends out here. So did you come here as a coach? Uh, Yes, and of course uh, Bob was here oh, already, he was already then, here. and uh, uh -huh. and there was an opening here, and and uh, I came out here as his assistant, and that's where I started out. Was this in junior uh, high? This was in junior and high. Coaching. We coached uh -huh. in junior high for five years, and then I moved to Lubbock, and then I came back here, and I've been back here since then, uh -huh. and I've you know done a little bit of everything here, I guess. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you so very much, Ronnie Jones, uh, telling us about the other side to Ronnie Jones and well, your hobby that is very interesting. This uh, this is a, a big part of my life. I really enjoy it. 
And, you know, there, there are a lot of other things I enjoy, too, but this is a major part. Right. Well, uh, everybody has heard your voice on Channel 6 in the play-by-play -play description. We don't see your face very often, <laughs> very, very uh, seldom. Joella, you'll have to do that a little bit more often, okay, and show Bob and Ronnie on screen. You all do an excellent job, and well, you did an excellent job of the play-by-play -play here of uh, the B Western movies and telling us about your hobby. Well, I'm sure there are a lot of other things we could talk talk about on these. Uh, uh, Bob always says if you've seen one of them, you've seen them all, you know, and so I guess when I talk about these, you could say that too, but uh, I, I can get started on these and talk all night, you know, because I enjoy them, I, you know, talking about the different stars and all, and a lot of stories, like, have I got time for one story? One story. Okay. Uh, Alan Rocky Lane here, you know, on the book, and we've seen his picture on the posters. Uh, his real name is Harry Albert Short, and when you hear these fellows' real names, like John Wayne was Mary and Mitchell Morrison, a lot of people think it's Michael, but it's Mitchell. But uh, uh, they changed their names, you know, to things like Sunset Carson and Alan, Alan Rocky Lane, the Stallion Blackjack, and all that sounded good, you know, on the movie marquees and all. And uh, Lane was a, a perfectionist. He was real hard to get along with. Uh, he, uh, he worked hard, and uh, he wanted his way on his pictures. And most of these fellas uh, made these movies, you know, with a grain of salt. They just had a good time. And he, he made his like, you know, he was a Shakespearean actor. And uh, when the, his Western movie career ended in 1953, television was killing out the movies, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, he couldn't get a job anywhere, and he was very bitter about this because uh, a lot of people didn't like him because he was pretty demanding when he was making the movies. He, even though he, he did a bang-up job on his movies, he was still very demanding. And uh, in the 60s, you remember Mr. Ed on TV, uh -huh, The sure Talking Horse? Um, Alan Young, that starred in the, in the series and also the producer in the series, uh, we're in a place called Fats Jones Riding Stables out in uh, California and trying to find a, a horse for that movie uh, or TV series. And while they were in there, Lane was spending a lot of time in there in those days. He was out of work and all, and, and they heard him talking. They liked his voice. And so they hired him to be the voice of Mr. Ed. So when you see Mr. Ed on TV, it's Alan Rocky Lane talking. I did not know now, that. Now, when you see the credits, you won't see his name on the credits because his pride hurt him so much to have to do oh. that that he made them write up a contract that he would not have his name on the screen. Is that right? And, uh, and then later on it became very uh, famous, you know, and popular with fans. And, he, and he wanted his name on the uh, so credits they, and they would not they put him on there, you know. So, and <laughs> he, he made, he he made, got the money. He made more money on that series than he did all of his yeah. Western movies. Uh -huh. And then when he died in uh, uh, early 70s, uh, 1973, I believe, he was wealthy enough, you know, uh -huh. so so that saved him. Yeah. A lot of them, like uh, Lash LaRue and people like that, have come on hard times. Did you see a stagecoach here with Willie Nelson lately? No. They put on TV, a new, no, the no. new TV version. If you look at that, Lash LaRue is in the last scene of it. It has, right? has one line in it. Mm -hmm. well, Every now and then you'll see these guys, so hmm. he didn't look like Lash. He's got white beard and mustache now, you know, but... <laughs> But that, you know, there are a lot of other stories we could tell, but that's well, that's one you. reason I'm so interested in this. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that story and a big part of your life and your love with us here, Ronnie Jones, today at Watson Junior High. And we were so glad to be able to bring you another side of Ronnie Jones, the assistant principal here at Muleshoe Junior High.
failing list or due in the office on uh, Monday, February the 15th. Student failing letters should also be sent home on Monday the 15th. And that's all the announcements for today. Thank you.